uh, I'll be presenting uh, sales sound. Uh, this is Mrs. M, 32 years old, uh, unmarried lady from Tirupati, came with acute onset worsening breathlessness from baseline NYHA class 2 to NYHA class 4 since 15 days with history of exertional palpitations, NYHA class 3 and chest pains, uh, NYHA class 3. Also, she also had uh, a history of dysuria, urgency, frequency, flank pain since 4 days. Family history, she has a younger sister, 10 years back, uh, died of sudden cardiac death. Past history, she was diagnosed to have a congenital heart disease at the age of 3. She developed dyspnea at the age of 3 with uh, NYHA class 2. She was not evaluated for the same outside. Required multiple admissions in the past due to breathlessness with uh, repeated LRTI. Uh, there was no history of any syncope. Her mother noticed bluish discoloration since 3 years of age. There is a history of a chemical cardioversion uh, one, uh, one month prior presentation. Uh, on examination, she was conscious, cooperative. Pulse rate was 60 beats per minute, regular in rhythm, normal in volume and character. Uh, blood pressure, all four limbs were normal. Uh, respiratory rate was 19 breaths per minute. Saturation, maintaining 85% in room air. She was afebrile, no pallid ectress. Fetal edema was present till ankle. Grade 3 clubbing was present. Uh, peripheral and central sinuses was present. A JVP was elevated. Uh, systemic examination, cardiac examination, uh, inspection, no precordial bulge. Apex, visible in sixth intercostal space. Uh, palpation, apical impulse uh, position was confirmed and with right parasternal heave. Uh, was present. Uh, second heart sound was palpable and low, left lower parasternal border thr thrill was present. On percussion, left second intercostal space was dull. Uh, left heart border corresponded to apex and right heart border to right sternal margin. Auscultation, first heart sound was normal as heard in mitral area and a single second heart sound was heard in loud P2 uh, 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 ejection systolic murmur at pulmonary area and early diastolic murmur at uh, pulmonary area was heard. And a grade 4 pan-systolic murmur heard in the left lower sternal border, best heard with, by diaphragm not radiating to axilla and not varying with respiration. Other system, uh, systemic examination was normal, except for per abdomen, those epigastric pulsations. Um, so, summarizing a uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, M, 32 years old lady uh, with worsening breathlessness and bluish discoloration with uh, lower urinary tract symptoms requiring multiple visits in the hospital with a history of uh, cardioversion. Any differentials? Mm -hmm. So she presented with acute heart failure, uh, precipitated by uh, probable acute cystitis or pyelonephritis, uh, ACS arrhythmias. So any differentials for causes of uh, chronic heart failure with cyanosis could think of. So the differentials we thought of were uh, one is congenital cyanotic heart disease, uh, since there is a history since three years of age, and chronic pulmonary thromboembolism, lower down uh, pulmonary AV malformation, bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Investigation, uh, hemoglobin was 18.1. Uh, other uh, parameters were normal, except LFT, there was direct hyperbilirubinemia. Uh, there was no serial elevation of cardiac enzymes. NT pro BNP was 8,000. Urine and blood culture showed no growth. Uh, chest X ray showed a dilated pulmonary trunk. Uh, left atrium was dilated, enlarged, and right atrium was enlarged, and there was cardiomegaly. Uh, so, ECG, this was the ECG of the patient, uh, which showed. Uh, uh, Anyone wants to describe the ECG? So, uh, so the peculiar findings I will mention in this ECG. One is uh, the P wave is enlarged. There is a uh, P wave is showing a right atrial and left atrial enlargement. This P wave is a peak P wave, uh, enough, uh, and it is called P tricuspidal because uh, this peak P wave is in association with a LVH and an LAD. So there is an LVH uh, fulfilling Sokolovion criteria and then uh, left axis and the left axis deviation is also present. Uh, echo finding, this was the echo finding of the patient. Uh, describing the echo, there is a tricuspid, uh, tricuspid valve is atritic. There is an uh, ostium secundum ASD with an inlet BSD. And we can see there's mixing of the blood in the, uh, RA, uh, in the RA. And we can also see the RV is underdeveloped and it is a little hypoplastic. And there is a electromechanical uh, dissociation. It's not pumping equally. Like. So diagnosis of this patient, acute heart failure uh, with congenital cyanotic heart disease, uh, tricuspid atresia, it's an Epstein subtype with VSD and uh, inlet VSD and or secundum ASD with type 1 pulmonary hypertension respirated by acute py pyelonephritis. So I'll be uh, discussing on tricuspid atresia. So coming to congenital heart disease, the classification can divide into acyanotic and cyanotic. Acyanotic can be left to right chance, uh, which can be pre-tricuspid ASD or post-tricuspid uh, VSD. 
PDA, obstructive lesions, ASPS. Uh, in cases of uh, uh, and, uh, causes of cyanotic heart disease, can be decreased pulmonary blood flow, increased pulmonary blood flow, or with pH. Increased pulmonary blood flow is the uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, transfusion of great arteries, uh, double outlet right ventricular obst obstruction with uh, BSD, tricuspid atresia with large BSD. So tricuspid atresia is the third most common cyanotic heart disease. Uh, it's uh, uh, one to three per uh, consists of one to three percent of all congenital heart disease. And there are two types. One is norm uh, associated with normally related great arteries, and another with uh, TGA with PS or without PS. And uh, this atritic tricuspid it leads to no communication with the RA, RA and RV which makes it uh, non uh, non viable in the early period of life for it to uh, for the survival of the uh, survival uh, there should be some shunts which is in the form of asd vsd or a pda uh, most commonly it is the uh, vsd and usually uh, asd with vsd is present so coming to hemodynamics so uh, the ra receives blood from the uh, svc and ivc which in turn goes to la la receives blood from pulmonary vein and there's mixing of blood in the LA. And from LA, it goes to LV. There's atritic tricuspid valve. So in view of which the RV gets, uh, un it's underdeveloped. And uh, there is, uh, uh, there's only connection where RV gets the blood is from the LV. And most of the tricuspid atresia, it is found that the uh, pulmonary artery is atritic. Uh, so uh, uh, from there, RV, it gets, uh, there is a pulmonary circulation. Uh, we can divide this into two types. One is uh, with increased pulmonary blood flow and decreased pulmonary blood flow based on the whether pulmonary artery is atritic or not. So on physical examination, generally find a central cyanosis, a single second heart sounds because the pulmonary artery is mostly uh, is mostly uh, at atritic or it's stenosed. A holosystolic murmur uh, in the left lower tunnel border uh, uh, con con consisting of VSD. A continuous murmur may be heard if the PDA shunt is present and uh, a prominent a wave if there is a la to ra shunt a uh, major shunt if there is a large asd uh, in ca in case of abg we will find a pulse oximetry with desaturation so again uh, if there is a large vsd there will be increased pulmonary blood flow and we will see a pulmonary plethora if there is a decreased pulmonary blood flow uh, will be due to a small vsd there will be a oligemia in this patient uh, there was a good uh, there was increased bronchovascular markings um, apex will be LV type and laterally we will see the posterior portion will be enlarged, which is suggestive of L left atrial enlargement. And echo is a, uh, echo will uh, show absent tricuspid uh, uh, valve, atritic tricuspid valve, ASD and RV hypoplasia. And echo we should also assess for the location and relationship of great arteries to characterize the type of the lesion, the presence and size of the uh, VSD and the degree of the shunting. And the more diagnostic test now user the, is the uh, cardiac catheterization. The second type, the first one is the uh, uh, tricuspid atresia with a normal related, normally related great artery. Second is the with TGA. So with TGA, the pulmonary blood flow is markedly increased as it has a large VSD. And uh, since there is a large VSD, there should be a pulmonary blood flow, which uh, again uh, gets better oxygenation in the pulmonary circulation and less cyanosis than the type 1. Uh, and usually they present with CSCC, uh, cardiac failure, recurrent respiratory tract infections, and uh, failure to thrive. So the treatment, the main consideration, the three main considerations to be followed. One is the uh, the amount of pulmonary blood flow should be decreased. Uh, amount of pulmonary blood flow should be regulated, should be maintained to decrease any hypoxemia. Second, the myocardial function and integrity of the pulmonary vascular bed should also be preserved. Uh, and third, uh, uh, an infective endocarditis prophylaxis. So. Uh, mostly the medications involved are the uh, which can uh, which can make the shunts patent. So most commonly uh, PDA uh, and VSD. VSD is the most common. Second PDA, the uh, alprostadil PGE one, which uh, maintains the ductus arteriosus. Uh, second, uh, surgical procedures like Fontaine procedure, which connects the SVC and IVC to the pulmonary artery, bypassing the RV. So the indications of surgery. Uh, initially, the surgical treatment is usually in the initial first year of uh, the life. And uh, cyanosis with uh, decreased pulmonary blood flow is the indication of surgical intervention. It is uh, surgical intervention is in, done in three steps. Shortly saying, the uh, first stage is, form, uh, is performed in the unit, second stage is the Glenn's procedure, and third stage is the Fontaine's procedure. Uh, complications from Fontaine's are pulmonary edema, congestive hepatopathy, pleural effusions, ascites, uh, protein-losing enteropathy, and cardiac arrhythmias. 
So tricuspid atresia with prolonged survival. Uh, one article revealed only two case reports in with without surgery. Uh, there were two cases uh, uh, who survived till 40 to 50 years of age uh, without shunts, uh, without uh, surgery and with shunts. Uh, the most common shunts in them was a VSD and a PDA. Uh, however, the survival rate is 90% of patients with tricuspid uh, uh, valve atresia survived to the age of one year and 10 years survival is 80%. And the risk factors which determine the mortality are the pulmonary atresia and underlying genetic syndromes and presence of extra cardiac anomalies. So our patient, uh, coming back to our patient, so our patient had a pulmonary tricuspidal, which I've explained before. Also, there is a left atrial and a LVH enlargement. LA due to, uh, uh, since LA receives blood from both pulmonary vein and ASD, uh, and LVH because it receives blood from pulmonary vein and vena cava, and uh, LAD because of unopposed uh, LV forces from uh, underdeveloped RV because of atretic tricuspid valve. Uh, echo finding showed a tricuspid type 1 with inlet VSD. Uh, 19 mm is a large VSD. Uh, ASD os uh, ostium secundum type with dilated pulmonary artery and moderate PR uh, and pulmonary artery hypertension. So in ward, uh, she was initiated on ambricentin, tadalafil, metoprolol and uh, uh, in cases of valvular heart disease uh, with heart failure, it's the guideline directed medical therapy which is uh, diuretics and beta blockers and uh, uh, MRAs. So furosemide, spironolactone and metoprolol were initiated. She had a sudden episode of palpitations during hospital stay uh, in which ECG revealed AVRT in shock. So she, were, she was reverted back to sinus rhythm after DC cardioversion. Um, coming back to the association of arrhythmias in tricuspid atresia. So the first, uh, so the most commonly it is associated with primary heart blocks because tricuspid atresia is uh, mostly associated with an ASD and a VSD. And ASD, ostium, secundum, and primum, uh, they are mostly associated with the defects in the area of the AV node. So AV node is present at the area of the triangle of Koch, which is uh, which is in the border of the septal leaflet, tendon of Todaro, and coronary sinus. So when there is de de uh, developmental defect in the ostium secundum type, uh, that time there is a, a developmental uh, uh, defect in the AV node. So which cause, which is one of the reason for a heart block. Second reason is, uh, second reason there is chronic left to right shunting. In, uh, which leads to increased hemodynamic load and geometric remodeling, which again causes electrical remodeling. And combination of these will, uh, causes interstitial fibrosis and chamber enlargement, leading to increased atri intraatrial conduction. There are other arrhythmias also, uh, which has been associated. One is atrial fibrillation, ventricular arrhythmias, and uh, AVRT. So I would also like to mention uh, other in, uh, ECGs associated with uh, congenital heart diseases. So the first one, uh, so this ECG, uh, anyone wants to say any peculiar feature found in this ECG? So, the first one again we have seen before uh, the Himalayan P waves is also present here. Uh, there is also a right bundle branch block in V1, but there is a slurring of the QRS. This is not a typical RBVB, it's called a slurred RBVB. Um, along with that, we have a right axis deviation. Um, so, uh, the uh, this uh, this congenital heart disease is mostly associated with the type B WPW syndrome SVT and a PR prolongation. So this is the ECG of uh, Epstein's anomaly, which has a Himalayan P waves and a slurred uh, RBVB with a right axis deviation. So the second ECG. So second ECG is a, a finding in which you see a crocketage sign. There's a notching in the R wave in lead two, three, and AVF, which is peculiarly seen in a uh, ostium secundum ASD uh, with a it also has a right axis deviation and this uh, and this notching the second part of the QRS is because of RVOT dilatation it's not a electrical uh, involvement of uh, QRS complex second is uh, if there is a left axis deviation with the same finding that is a that is found in ostium primum ASD uh, this ECG uh, showing uh, uh, so basically there is LV volume overload and uh, RV pressure overload. This is seen by a, a very high diphasic, uh, it's called a Catswell Watchell phenomena in which there is a very huge uh, QRS complex, which is almost measuring more than 50 mm. Uh, this is a large VSD. If there is a small VSD, the such huge complexes won't be formed and it will be a normal. Uh, second, in case of uh, PDA, there will be a volume overload state, which is defined as a tall RV, with a R wave with a septal Q wave and an upright T wave. And in cases of a pressure overload, it will be opposite. 
which will be a tall r wave but q uh, septal q wave will be absent and the t wave will be inverted in case of pressure overload and uh, pda will also have a left atrial enlargement uh, with uh, with the lvh if there is pda with isenmangerism as i mentioned so since there is isenmangerism there will be uh, more pressure uh, there will be shunting from the uh, uh, lv uh, from, from the ra uh, rv to uh, lv the secondary to rvh so there will be more uh, rv uh, rv forces will be dominating lv forces forces so there will be more rv uh, the more characterization uh, of the ecg will be tending towards rv pressure overload so we will see a tall rv uh, tall rv uh, no septal q wave and an inverted t wave and in tof uh, uh, there is one peculiar feature in which there is sudden transition of a qrs complex from uh, v1 to v2 usually we find this transition in v3 to v4 the inversion of it uh, the reversal of the trans uh, from uh, negative v1 to uh, positive v6 but here there is a sudden transition from v1 to v2 and there with an rvh and rad which is peculiar of a uh, tetralogy of fallot so the learning points is uh, tricuspid atresia and ecg patterns in congenital heart diseases thank you dr benedict uh, just one question going back to your uh, clinical features was there anything to suggest a tricuspid atresia uh, so so the tricuspid atresia there is no as such findings one thing is there uh, what is the differential you could have made based on your uh, the findings that you you got from your patient so one what are the differentials after clinical examination that you got uh, uh, one could be a uh, tetralogy of fallot will be one of my differential since there is a parasternal heave rvh with a, a cyanosis and a a uh, pansystolic murmur vsd so and a single heart sound uh, overriding of aorta so tof will be one of my uh, differential second will be critical pulmonary stenosis which can again lead to rvh and uh, did you consider vsd with an eisenmenger uh, yes sir that also uh, be... did you mention it um, i don't think you mentioned it so vsd with an eisenmenger could have been considered any other questions <laughs> 